Hello, hello, Edison Oliver here. This is the DNN monthly chat. This is the April edition. Today we are recording this on April 27th at 10 a.m. in the morning, a Saturday. So I'm making the team wake, wake up early and I have kids around. So again, if you hear noise, don't get too impressed. It's my kids fighting for their lives upstairs somewhere here. Anyway, it is, it is great to be here again cons constantly for the last five years. So I'm just going to put my, my video a little bit bigger for now. So it is five years of our you know, get together of our little, you know, you know why I do this? I do this because I like talking to you guys, to you, the three of you, not to you there. I mean, you too, you too. But again, I love, I love doing this once a, once a month, getting together with my, my friends and talking about what we like doing, you know, things that we're doing in the space, outside of the space, just uh, get together. Hopefully we can bring some you know, information, some useful information. So again, this is the sixth, sixth, and I can tell it's too much H, TH, I hate that. So uh, again, it's the sixth and... Yeah, it's been a pleasure. We started with uh, me and Scott, and then we had some, you know, someone sneak in, Joe, and then Mike came in. So, awesome, awesome. Great to have you guys. Scott, anything to celebrate our fifth anniversary? I'm s has it really been f so five years since the since we the DNN Monthly Chats? 2013, wow. Actually, actually, actually that is 2014. So, so oh, again, it's, right. yeah. it's oh, April, okay. April, 2014 was our first one. And I, I have, I have the playlist because I put everything in the playlist so I can see our, yeah. our very first one. So yes, it's a yep. uh, five You'll years. You have to put our, our, our images up on, on there from our first one. Okay. Let me see. I can click there and, uh, let me just pause and let me just advance this man. Let, let me compare here. Let's do some. I mean, I can share the link with you guys. So. Oh, you can edit it in. I'm not saying you have to do it right now, but yeah, I get it. Yeah, get it. wow, it's amazing. Five yes. years. Five years. Five years. <laughs> your English, uh, your English has come a long way, Addison. You can say sixth now. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 here's the thing: I cannot say sixth without complaining about saying sixth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what was the other word you had a, a for a long time? It's world. World. World? Uh, world? Oh, okay. I have a hard time with world. I oh, see. Yeah. I still mumble <laughs> through world. Oh man! But but he can say Anderson really well, can he? Yeah. I can. I can. So I can. And I can also say my name is not Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days we'll do our whole meeting in Portuguese, just so you can get back at us. Well, you, you know what? And uh, I have I have uh, we have some Portuguese speaking. DNN community peep, peeps. Do we do, out? right? DNN Diva, maybe, right? DNN Diva. We have uh, Daniel Veladas. Daniel Veladas is, is oh, from sure. Portugal. Not from Brazil, but from Portugal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. So, so is is the is the dirty little secret out? Uh, Alessandra was born in Boston, Massachusetts. She's a real Yankee. Oh, really? <laughs> I, think, I think that... I, I think that's right. Uh, mm, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna double I'm gonna double check that you know, because maybe this is fake news, you know. <laughs> yeah, it it yeah. could be. We're, we're you know, this is coming from the American side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, guys. So again, five years, and uh, let's see, let's see, let's see how how many more we can. Just, there's just one time that uh, we skipped one month and maybe I was traveling and then we collapsed two episodes in, in one. But again, it has been very, very consistent, you know. One of the one of the few consistent things I have been able to do in my life. You know? <laughs> okay, so let's move on to something a little bit more useful here. And again, Mike, it's a pleasure having you as a, as a newcomer. If you have if you want to say, you know, a few words there as well. Yeah, I guess uh, it's probably been about a year now since I've been sneaking on, and uh, yeah, it's good to be here. That's uh, that's pretty much it. It's uh, it's a uh, good uh, 
good time to look forward to every month. Yes, it is. It is awesome. So again, now let's get get down to business here. Okay, so releases of DNN. Where are we? Okay, so we have officially released, and by say we, I'm I have nothing to do with that. I'm, the 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 peeps, the the smart people, they released version 931 so now there is an official release there again nothing is sneaky there you have a you have a, an upgrade package a full installation package and the links will be all posted here so again 931 is out 932 which is a release candidate is also out so again the the oven has been baking the and then releases right uh center left you know so release candidate of 932 is out <clears throat> there is a there is a release of 932 but i'm starting to get the 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 flow of how things happen so it seemed that there was a, a 932 release but then it came back maybe something you know was broken i don't know but again there is also a release candidate for 932 out there that was placed about 10 days ago those minor release versions they are really uh, maintenance versions and usually they don't have much to be no to, to see uh, but of course I'm not saying that there was not much work done behind the scenes yes of course there there is so uh, so again the release and anybody has anything about releases to mention well I have a live 931 site uh, in production. Uh, I was doing it with 930. Uh, I, I may have actually have been doing it with 932 because I upgraded before they they removed it. Uh, but that's that's running 931 now, um, and I think 94 scheduled for later this year is the last uh dnn 9 version yes and we're going to be talking a little bit about dnn 10 as well because there was a blog post right but about dnn 10 but let's just hold on for a second on yeah but one. the but the the thing about 931 is it deals with uh three security issues i think two are minor and one is medium but uh, since the other side i've been working on is 7.0.0 uh, <laughs> trying to trying to get that moved up uh you know i mean lots of performance and usability and security fixes uh since uh nine point or 7.0 which was probably what four years ago it's almost as old as the monthly chat. Uh, Joe, you can you can write a book about that adventure of upgrading. I mean, you can. I I wouldn't want to. <laughs> Although I, I I have another site that we keep going back to that's a five point something site that uh, with some other really weird features, including. Uh, a home encrypted database uh so uh you know, you, you know what, what, let, let me confess that i love doing upgrades i i really find up i i find myself when i'm doing an upgrade or even a side grade you know but i love doing that because to me it's uh it's like a puzzle i know more or less the rules that i have to follow but hey things can explode in your face i mean well not, it's not a puzzle then but anyway all of a sudden things can happen and again you're not expecting now you have to investigate and again you have to be a, a little bit of a, de a detective when you are doing some of those upgrades you no know? and i love doing that i i, I have to say uh, i don't want my clients to hear that but i would do upgrades for free all day long if i could because i love doing them <laughs> Well, am I uh, weird? Am I strange? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but that's why, we, that's why the four strangers uh, meet here every every month. But I I think you can now go from early versions of seven 
up to 9.3.1 in one step, you know, with one upgrade. Of course, it doesn't work uh, when you get to 9.3.1, but if you uh, make some simple fixes to skins and ignore the fact that modules have to be upgraded, um, but if you can if you can get the site to load, you can actually upgrade the modules after you've done the upgrade. And it, it's really not too bad. I think that I, I think it's my fetish. I have a fetish for upgrades, you know. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. So the title the, is the video is Adderson just <laughs> revealed his deepest, darkest secret. <laughs> upgrade fetish. Yeah. Let's leave it at that. So uh moving on here, so Actually, before we move on, I wanted to, to bring something back to you, Mike. Uh, you, you were the one doing the Google Analytics comeback? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I uh, built the, uh, a connector um, for, uh, I think it was 9.3.0 that, that went live in, or it might be 9.3.1. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a new uh, connector that uh, basically puts an interface uh, back onto Google Analytics. Um, so behind the scenes, it's all the same stuff as you would have had in seven and eight. Uh, so if you had that in the past, it would still just continue to work, but now there's a, a new front end on it. Yeah, so, so let me just confirm this. About Google Analytics, the, what it does really is that it creates that file under the portal folder with the ID of the account. And, and that's, that's about it, correct? Yeah, so there's a... Um, I, I call it the core analytics providers, the uh, core Google analytics provider that ships with DNN. And uh, yeah, that, that's responsible for creating that file, uh, you know, working with the template uh, that's at the root of the website too, where you can put the snippet um, and loads in the token, which would be that ID. Uh, I just basically put a front end back on top of that. Got it. Okay. Okay. So, so actually I had a question here. I, I wrote out to ask, to ask every, every, every one of us here. Uh, I love Google Analytics, like the module. However, there's one quick thing, one simple thing. And again, this is all about Google Analytics, but what if you guys need to put a script throughout the entire site? What, what is your usual way of going about that? Because I, I think that different people have different recipes for that, but I'll, I'm interested to hear how we go about, and again, it's not Google Analytics, because Google Analytics, there is a solution for that. But if you need to put any other type of script in the site on all pages, what's your solution, Mike, for that? Um, I guess it depends on context. Uh, okay. So if I had complete control of everything, um, maybe I'd put it in a skin or something like that, uh, or else, you know, I was trying to do a one-off, you know, if you're, sometimes you might want to add something to a page for a couple of days, then rip it off. You know, you could do a, a shared module or something like that. In, in my opinion, there's no really graceful way that I've seen that, um, without adding, you know, hidden modules to pages and things like that. Uh, I, I, I personally think that the, the whole analytics, uh, provider system should be probably renamed to be something more like, um, and then page injection system because it, it's not really related to analytics at all. It's uh, the whole provider thing just, and you can have one or many of these providers, they just literally inject whatever you want into every single page on the portal. So I would really love to see something built with that kind of provider um, methodology that's a, a generic, you know, injection filter or something like that. Got it. Joe, do you have any particular solution for, for that? I mean, when you come across that kind of thing? I try all of the bad ways, um, <laughs> uh, and which are? Uh, you know, and the the bad way is include module on all pages. I mean that's uh, that's a way to guarantee yourself pain for a lifetime. Uh, but I do it on occasion. Um, yeah, I I think putting it in the skin is the best solution in in most cases. And on rare occasions, I have <clears throat> guess which file I have edited. Oh my goodness! No, 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 no! Let's not go there. I mean, that's 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 the that's biggest. That's why I didn't say it out loud. Okay, that's the biggest scene in in DNN. That is the biggest scene. 
and I have never done that. Never? Never. <laughs> never. <See>? Never? Never. <laughs> okay, so just to make it so, clear, for the ones that are not in the know, what I'm quite sure that Joe is referring to is opening the default dot ASPX file and messing yeah. around on that file. There's, there's a file with that name? See, hmm. he's just a pretender. He's just a big pretender. Anyway, so, so no, no. So the, the, per, the preferred way I, I think is to do things like that in the skin and uh, the counter argument to that is if you have somebody who likes to keep changing what's in the footer, um, it's better to give them a, you know, put modules there and include on all pages. Um, I like, uh, if, if you do that in evoke, uh, there is only one, yeah, uh, a module that's shared on all pages, uh, has a designated home page and you can only edit the module from that page um, which is uh, very useful it first of all will let you know where you put it the first time but um, you know if you go to a page in DNN community and delete a shared module like that uh, or you uncheck the show on every page it this it takes away from all the other pages, but it leaves it on the one you're currently looking at, uh, which can be a bit of a mess. But, uh, and uh, recently uh, I have been doing a lot of my skinning work with uh, uh, NV Quick Theme, and uh, that really does take a lot of the pain out of uh, changing something in the footer uh, and uh, you know, rebuilding the skin and reloading it, which, uh, which is better, I think, than you know, getting into the individual files and the theme and uh, messing around with them. Yeah, if you guys, if, obviously the skin is the best, uh, what I usually do, but if you don't have access to that, there's a couple other ways to do it. One I've done with some success, and I, I can't remember the specifics, though I have on my screen the site analytics config. Um, you can actually reference this from the config uh, within the settings interface, but you can actually, this is meant for injecting analytics type uh, script templates. You can actually clone this, the uh, analytic, I think the analytic engine block and put in other arbitrary uh, scripts if you want. I think I've done this before. I, I, if you need an example, I can show it. But the other thing is uh, on the site settings, you can put script in the, in the HTML page header tags. You could, you could put script blocks in there, which will put it on the, in the head of every page. Got it. The, the, only, yep. the, the only thing that we need to consider when doing those kinds of things is that some scripts, the instructions are put in the header. Mm -hmm. Some scripts yeah. put at the top of the body, right after you open the yeah. body. Some script says yeah. put right before you close the body. And I, and I think that even yeah. your settings, there, there is something about that in the... Mike, going back to you, in the in the aging, engine of, of, uh, of analytics, you know, but, but again, it's not very, it's not very clear what you need to do now. Uh, something that I have done in the past and I've used and it's not, I mean, it could be better. It could be easier. It's a module built by Will Stroh. There is a module called, uh, I think it's content injection or con content injector or something like that, mm -hmm. that you can actually inject content throughout the entire site. Now, I think that you have to do showing all pages, I think so. Yeah. But mm -hmm. again, another one. Yeah. Yeah, not a very, not the, a very- the script no. analytics, you can see those two, those two elements. It does let you choose which, where you want it in the body on the top or the bottom. So you can have some control of that. I, I think I've put together a video about that before. And I think that this video, 
uh, it was about Google Google Tag Manager actually, and uh, yeah. Peter Peter Donker reached out to me saying that there is something missing in the video that some people broke their sides after doing that. Oh, and I said, okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah. But yeah. but uh, yeah, that that was it. I had something else in mind here. It will it will come back. So so yeah. So again, potentially different. It's now. Oh, I know. I also saw people using Google Tag Manager to manage scripts for them. Again, I've never got too deep into Google Tag Manager, I, and I want to understand a little bit more about that. Google Tag Manager is can work together with Google Analytics, and it's what what the name says. It's a it's a it's an, an admin interface on the Google Tool Set that will allow you to add scripts to your sites and place them wherever you want there. Now, again, I don't know all the ins and outs. I even saw sessions during the end summits that were talking about Google Tag Manager because it's very flexible. And, and again, people seem to be able to go around messing with scripts in the, in the sites by using Google Tag Manager and having those scripts there. I don't know too much, too many details, but it seems to be uh, a potential solution as well. I don't, I don't know if it happens to you guys, but uh, whenever you do something like that, really clever, works real well, and three years transpire and your client comes back and says, can you fix that thing? It generally takes me about half a day to even remember what I was thinking when I did it and where I put it. You see, why do you think that I used to do DNA tips? Those tips are for me not to lose my memory. I mean, they are just a way for me to store my memory somewhere else outside of this limited yep. space, you know? Yep. Anyway, okay, good. So I just wanted to uh, debate a little bit about where and what tools and which strategies we use for placing scripts in our DNN websites. Let's move on here. Let's talk a little bit about the blogs that went on for the past month. So I'm gonna start with the, the one that comes out every month, the DNN Digest by Clint Patterson. And again, if you want to have a, a scoop, a summary of what went on in the, in the previous month, in the previous 30 days, uh, this is a good place to, to get your information from. Actually, that's where I saw, Mike, that uh, you were involved with the Google Analytics. You have a shout out there at the very top of yeah, it. Yeah, I noticed that too. That was a, a nice surprise. <laughs> Congrats for that. So, so again, good, good reads. And again, it has really good summary. You have interviews. There is an interview with uh, Kelly Ford about Dean and Docs. Kelly Ford will be talking to Tadug. Not the next meeting, but the following one, the one in uh, April, June. So in our June meeting, uh, Kelly Ford will be joining in our TEDUG to talk about the DNN Docs, which is which he uh, leads the initiative. So there's an interview done by Clint with uh, with Kelly Ford and uh, quite a few other things there is a there's actually a video as well and i wanted to mention this a little bit later but i'm gonna touch base right away a video uh about four ways to build a multilingual site on dnn and so again you can see all of that in this in the dna digest and yeah just a great great summary of what's going on if you want to be more up to date. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one that I want to bring to our attention is the one from Mitchell Sellers. Mitchell is the lead on the, what is the name of the of the group again? Uh, Mike, what, what's the name of the, uh, the, the advisor? Yeah, yeah, it's the, uh, it's the uh, tag group. So it'd be like the uh, technology. technology architect. Group. Got it, the, yeah. technology, the talk, technology group, the group that, I know, lay out the path for DNN technology-wise. So this blog post is about moving forward the DNN platform version 10, growing pains lead to improvement. So I had a look at what this is about. It's really about mentioning the fact that there will be always a, a planned 
removal of older APIs. And the, it seems that the, the idea is that if you are going to DNN 10, then all deprecated APIs that were flagged back in DNN 8, they'll be removed. So you're going to have a, a two version uh, gap there. So again, whatever is between the, the last two versions up to now will stay. But again, the, the last, the second last one will be dropped there. So that will give developers a chance to review their, their if they're using deprecated APIs. And something that he mentions very, very uh, properly is the fact that if you are compiling your module codes against the latest version, and if you are getting warnings about obsolete use of APIs, you might as well just remove them at that point because in the next major, major version of DNN, those will be dropped. So again, be ahead of the game, try to be ahead of the game. And if you get warnings, replace them already. I mean, because, because no API gets removed and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Scott, Mike, but no API gets removed unless there is a, a, a new way of achieving that, that feature or that, uh, that function or that method. Is that, can, can I say that blank statement, Mike? Uh, I would, I would say that's not entirely accurate, probably, probably, um, you know, if, if you look at Dynamic as a product, uh, as it continues to evolve, if there's features that people aren't using ever, or that are unused, I wouldn't be surprised to see those get flagged as, as deprecated one day and, and disappear. Um, I think that you're correct in, in that some of the methods and things like that, there, there's newer counterparts uh, for them, but I don't think it's a, a, a like for like in all cases by any means. Okay. And they usually do a good job of, of commenting on deprecated APIs. Uh, if, if there is a trans, like you're supposed to use a different, a different one that's been refactored or something like that, they're pretty good at that. But the other thing I was going to note it in Anderson in that blog post was, which is a kind of a new thing is uh, he mentioned that NuGet packages with these, um, with the new with the new 10.0 you know core libraries will be released in advance. Would normally NuGet NuGet packages. The reason I don't use them as much is be, is because they normally kind of lag in getting released after the product. Now they're going to put the those as release candidates before so that module vendors can compile against it uh, without having to download an entire release candidate. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they've hooked it up so that in kind of the whole build process, uh, well, I, may automatically not be register. I think it's automatic. So it, it yeah, publishes cool. for us. Yeah. 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 And, and I think the, the other piece that was important in there was that when they say they're going to be removed in the future, they're really going to remove them. I think there were cases in, in the last go around and going to nine dot whatever that stuff was removed. Yeah, there was stuff that was go that was removed in nine point, was it two? That uh, if you went back and looked, it said this is going to be released in 7.5, uh, removed. And but you know, this, you know, the, the subtitle of that blog post is you have been warned don't complain to me when it happens to you. <laughs> it's gotcha. very well thought out and documented uh, process for removing deprecated features. They'll tell you when, and they're actually going to remove them. So cool. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, previous, previously in the code, it would say it was going to be deprecated in the future, but now they went through and updated all of the warnings to say as of X version. So if you're coding, yeah. It's not just, hey, in the future, it's here it is. Yeah. Awesome. And again, very good to see how transparent this is, you know, how how clear the message is. And as you as you guys are saying, there is no lack of warning up front here. Good. So again, Mitchell Sellers brings some updates about the growing pains uh, of improving DNN. And again, we are close to a, a, a DNN version 10. Good. Next here, Mr. Will Stroh, Mr. Stroh, community sites, the .org, DNN software.org. So he puts a blog post, you too 
can help us build the DNN community website, the .org website. So there's this initiative going on right now to put together a home for the community, a home outside the commercial website, outside of the .com website. And Will and the team, I think that this is this has been driven by the awareness group. They are you know, putting this call out, out there to bring people interested in joining, in participating in all kinds of levels. If you know, you know, if you are a coder, you can help coding. If you are a content, if you are more towards the content side of things, maybe you want to, to write content for the site. Maybe you want to design stuff for the site. So again, there is a, a call to action here by Will Stroh inviting anyone that can contribute on a voluntary basis to build the DNN software.org website. At this point, this is the the URL, the domain. But but yes, yeah, so again, great, great initiative to have our home outside of the DNN software.com. So that's a blog post and a video as well. He goes through this this explanation via video too there's a trail a trail board that you can come in and you can say hey i want to contribute to this aspect to that aspect i want to lead this i want to be part of this so again a big shout out to will Stroh and the awareness group okay okie dokie so again moving on i think that for blog post those were the ones actually there's there's a blog post slash video. It's more about, it's more really a video, but there's a blog post with a bit of a summary. It is the DNN Hangouts. And they started this Hangouts trying to play, literally play guitar together, all three of them. So Ralph, Will, and Cassidy. Cassidy was uh, interviewed during this Hangouts that happened a, a few days ago. So if you want to check it out, they bring some news as well, but their focus is really on interviewing and, and shining lights to members of the community. And again, this time around, they were talking to Cassidy, which is uh, you know, a leader in the DNA space, having, uh, you know, leading so many, uh, leading the last three DNA summits that have has happened in uh, in Denver, and uh, again, we are very grateful and thankful for her contributions and ongoing contributions, and as an MVP as well. You know? So again, a good interview with Cassidy, and uh, a fun one as well. So again, check that out. Hey, so we can, if you want, we can go ahead and just. You know, you know what I was I was thinking. Can... Uh, you know, I could I could get my my daughter's ukulele. I have a ukulele here. I think we can match it. I yeah, think we can yeah. do it. So, Will, uh, Ralph, you better, you know, raise your game there because, I mean, we, we're going to be catching up to you guys, okay? Yeah. Okay, so in Orlando, we're going to have the Battle of the DNN Bands. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, can you imagine me singing? Because I can sing. Can you imagine me sing with my, with my broken English? I mean, that will be, at the very least, very exotic. In itself, you know. Well, I somebody told me that uh, Astrid Gilberto is a, a relative of yours. Well, and... you know what? If you're from Brazil, we are all relatives. It's it's all a big. <laughs> uh, um, my my wife, uh, I think, believes she's related to the entire uh, continent of South America. <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, so again. Guys, keep up. Will, Ralph, good job there. And keep that moving forward too. So again, Cassidy Pe Peterson or Patterson? I, I, I never remember. Peterson or Patterson? Peterson. Talks to e us about... E what is that, Joe? It's an E. It's not an A. Okay, Peterson. Yeah, okay, great. Yes, yes. Talks to us about being in summits, being and being an MVP, what it means to be a gorilla, and much, much more. Okay, awesome. So moving on here, we have our last Tadag meetup. 
that happened a few weeks ago with, uh, again, uh, Scott, I already said sorry. I mean, it was not personal. I know that you can beat Lee Wise, design-wise, anytime, any day, just bring it on. But but again, I, I've chose the wise guy for now. <laughs> anyway, so we had uh, Lee Wise. He talked about the best practices related to team development and special tricks of the trades. So uh, Lee went through a lot of the some sneaky, some some interesting ways of doing things when it comes to theming. So we had the good a good presentation there. Thank you very much, Lee, for doing that for Tadug. And hey, I, I want to actually point out um, one of the one that really besides the presentation itself, Lee um, Lee created an extension for uh, Visual Studio Code that um, basically it's got I think it's got hundreds of uh, code snippets for for DNN for like, for like the API. So as you're creating uh, skins, uh, if you have the extension, it'll auto-complete things like uh, you know pulling in the current uh, page name or uh, uh, page ID and things like that. So it, uh, I, I downloaded it. It's um, it's pretty pretty cool. Um, so if you're if you're into theming, it uh, definitely helped me out recently. Uh, so I didn't have to keep googling stuff. <laughs> uh, Mike, if you can share a link about that, I can add to the show notes. Okay. Sure. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, great. So, and again, uh, whenever I think about design, Scott, next time it will be you, okay? Did uh, did Lee make anything appear or disappear? What is that, Joe? Did, did he did he do any tricks? Oh, not the tricks, not the magic. No, no, not the it, magic. It, it, was all, it was all legit DNN tricks, not magic tricks. Yeah, not magic. Scott, by the way, you are muted, okay? So, again... No, I know. I'm muted on purpose. Okay. Got it. Okay. So, so <laughs> <laughs> just checking. I'm just checking here. Okay. So, next one here. There's no record so far published yet about that, but uh, the last meetup from So Fried, we had, they had Kelly. And again, Kelly, I'm sorry. I, I've tried many different ways, but I mean, the, the last part, I mean, again, Kelly from Smith Consulting. Uh, she is talking about Razor events. Okay, so that must have been very nice, very interesting. I know Kelly personally, so she is awesome. She, she's good. So, again, I have not seen a uh, recording yet, but it should come at some point. So, she, again, talking about Razor events, which is a new module that I think works together with the e commerce module that Smith Consulting has in uh, the commercial module that they have okay so that was the last so fright what else we have okay future events so we talk a little bit about the past future ones now uh let's see here i'm gonna start with tadag tadag next week may 1st we're gonna have mandip mandip and his team talking about live visualizer uh I, I thought that Live Visualizer would be live and available right now. I'm not sure if it is, but we're going to know more about that this coming Wednesday, May 1st, from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Mandip and his team will be coming to talk about Live Visualizer, which is a commercial version product that, uh, that goes... Uh, towards the the content structure type of uh, solution like liquid content open content two sex content so it's in that space so i'll be we'll be exploring we'll be let's say uh grilling him on his new offering this coming wednesday on our tadag meetup uh, he did a presentation i would assume that will be similar but i'm gonna Try to make sure that we have our own spin for the so fried a few a few months ago. Okay, so that's that's the first event. The, the next one, which we are a month away, just a month away, is of course Dean and Connect happening in the Swiss Alps, Champery, no, Champery, Champery. Again, I have to remember the French, the French mouth. So Champery, 
in a month, a month and a little bit. Now, what I found amazing is this email that, uh, you know, got blasted to everyone talking about how the event will, will happen and the details about the event. So let, let me just, I'm just going to read this little paragraph here. This year, we will schedule sessions until about three in the afternoon. Between three and dinner, we will offer a bunch of outdoors and indoors activities to exercise the body as well as the mind. Think cycling, swimming, climbing, curling, skating, walking, hiking. I'm already tired, you know, <laughs> I'm already tired just by reading this. I think that's I think that their intention, guys, is for us to live longer and exercise more. I think that's what they are trying to do here. <laughs> I, I I noticed uh, that there was no hang gliding listed. Oh. Okay, they, <laughs> keep, they want us to live longer. <laughs> live exactly, <laughs> live longer, not, not die right there and then. You know, now look at this. And they have they, they have this special closing that they're gonna have, you know. We booked a restaurant at 2,000 meters, weather permitting, where we'll see the sunset and have our closing dinner. You know what? I'm naming this the DNN Connect experience, you know? Yeah, so again, it's not, it's not <laughs> an event, it's the experience, you know. Man, let me tell you, those guys, they know how to put shirt together, you know. Scott, you'll be going there. I will. Yes. Talk about your session. Oh, this session actually is extracted from my full day advanced DNN training that I did this past um, February in Denver. And so it's building a, um, well, Mike knows this, building a connector, which and Mike probably knows that not very many people know how to do that, right? Um, I'm sure you you probably are like well where's the document <laughs> documentation for building it a connector? It took me uh, a good couple of days of reverse engineering. Uh, yeah, what they did on some of the other ones to figure what the heck to do. <laughs> yeah, same here, same here. So I'm building a connector uh, to Reddit, which is going to be fun. You know, all you guys know Reddit, right? Has an API. So we'll build a connector to Reddit that talks to Reddit, and then on top of that, we'll build an authentication provider, but that uses the OAuth um, base class for doing OAuth. Um, so it's kind of two in one. You you learn how to build an OAuth authentication client and a connector that that talks to the source, which is which will be Reddit. Um, so that'll be a fun uh, little little session. It's cool. Awesome, awesome. So again, report back from the trenches there. If you have time between cycling, swimming, biking, hiking, I mean, if you find some time to, you know, good, yeah, good, again. definitely. They yeah, they uh, apparently they have the rest of the evening reserved for the other traditional activity at DNN Summit. <laughs> yeah, so so they do a, they do a, a little bit of of content there between all those activities. People people come in sweaty for the event in a in a in a in a in a tidy room, no air conditioner. Can you imagine that? How nice that is? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Of course, there's plenty of air to flow around. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, good, good, good. So, 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 so what else we have here? Okay. I'm just going to briefly mention that. So again, the real focus is DNN Connect right now in about a month. The sessions have been released. So it's all public. You can find the links here in the show notes, a bunch of links. And, and again, Scott will be there as well as a lot of other people, uh, pips from the DNA community, not only Europe, but North America as well. Now, just briefly mention about this, DNA Summit 2020. Wow. Orlando, Florida. We're going to be, we're going to have a different setting. How, how is... How is Orlando on on, uh, on February? Uh, probably it could be cool. It could be ninety degrees. Yeah. Uh, one time we went to Disney World on Memorial, uh, no President's Day, which is in February. Uh, that's a holiday here, right? Um, 
it was like 70 degrees. We actually were swimming outside. It was 75 degrees, so okay, it wasn't Mike, too bad. Mike, officially, I need to, I need to have you with uh, with a uh, of uh, uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit calculator there, just to translate to into Celsius what oh. those guys are talking about, <laughs> yeah. you know. So uh, yeah, it'll be it's room temperature in February for so for the Canadians that's you know don't worry about weather you are not going to have a problem with it even if it's cold. <laughs> yeah, very little chance of snow. I think it'd be around 20, 24 hours, like awesome. low twenties. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, awesome, awesome. Okay, so again, nothing too much to be said right now, but looking forward to uh, twenty twenty. Um, well, looking, looking, looking forward, I think they plan to have the call for speakers open uh, in the next, you know, month. Um, I wonder, I wonder if we're going to have some sort of a swamp, swamp monster or something as, as the, as a, the mascot, you know? Because, I mean, we have, we have no, monsters no, no. from... Dan, 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 Dan in Summit has its mascot. Now, I, I think he travels. Oh, he travels? Uh, so, and so. I just I just will make a note that uh, Ron Miles lives in the Orlando area. Oh, interesting. So so is that is that a case? I mean, I don't know if you guys follow Disney uh characters but is that a case that olaf goes on vacation type of thing i mean if, if you guys know who olaf is yeah uh yeah nobody out there yeah okay, okay. we'll so find, just, we'll, we'll, just for we'll that find out, out. <laughs> olaf I, I, is a... go ahead, Joe. I, I don't i don't think the end and summit in orlando will feature um people in cartoon costumes but Okay. You never know. We never know. Maybe we have a cosplay, you know? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> and, and 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 if things get out of hand, uh, Ryan Moore will attack them with his lightsaber and save <laughs> everyone. Got it, got it. Okay, okay. Okay, so that's it. Dean and Summit. Let's move on here. Dean, Open Friday. Open Friday. Uh, we had two, the last two Fridays, I haven't been very present. So the previous one was Eastern. So I was out of commission. This past one, I was out of commission as well. I'm not sure how things went on there. I'm, in a way, I'm looking for, a, 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 I'm looking for, and again, it might be one of you guys, one of the three of you. I'm looking for a, let's put it this way, a, a, a partner in crime to, to keep open, open uh, Friday and then an open Friday and however you want to call that moving forward, you know, so I, I need, I need some, some assistance there in case I'm not around. So again, we can just spice things up and give us, give, give a, a message to, to, to people to come in. And again, I'll, I, I might be talking to you guys offline to see if uh, anyone, again, not much commitment here, just, just to, get the message started by 10 a.m. on Friday. So again, Open Friday is a, is a Slack channel where we come together to ask questions about DNN. Some questions happen throughout the week. We I, I've envisioned that to be more focused on a Friday between 10 and 2, but who knows? This may evolve to different formats, but I, I, I find that people seem to engage that quite well anyway open friday is still going and i may need a little bit of a hand to you know keep it keep pushing forward not much not much involvement but again i really like to see people coming together during open fridays okay okay let's go to our i mean we are in our fifth minute mark we are good here in time so let's go to our to our let's put it this way guess the fake or question of the day, or however it is. So today is not a fake or a real, but it's more of a trivia. It's more of a trivia question. I'm gonna share this link. Well, let me just, first of all, let me voice what this is about. So you're gonna have to guess which module vendor that is still active is the lasting, is lasting the longer in the DNA store. So it's the oldest one. It's the oldest one still in activity. 
and we're gonna have a few options there and I just want to see which one do you think is the right one and I have I think I have I have a good mix here so I'm gonna share this link with all of you and this is okay so let's go to the chat here is the link so Scott if you want to open that up in your view actually I actually that's okay so just open the chat put, put your names there and again which of the following DNN module vendors is active for the longest time in the DNN store the options are <clears throat> Evotiva. Evotiva is the, the vendor that uh, has the DNN backup and some, some very interesting tools as well. So is it Evotiva? Is it DNN Dev? DNN Dev is the organization that's led by Kelly Ford and he puts together, you know, he has the XMOD Pro. Is that Catalog? Catalog is the e-commerce juggernaut. I mean, of the past. Of, of, of the past. I mean, I have to say of the past. No, I, I mean... Again, they are still around, but hey, you know what? If you need e-commerce, I don't know if I... Anyway, let's leave it at that. So, is that Catalog? Is that Smith Consulting? They also have uh, an e-commerce solution there. Is that Mendips? They have the live suite of, of, of modules, you know? So, which one? Let's put the... Let's put our Jeopardy, and I'm going to give a few seconds, and then I'm going to go around here. So, let's go. Ahead. You guys here? I'll take mine off the screen so they the others can't see. <laughs> oh. You know, do we have a do we have a new Jeopardy champion who's just killing it? That's what I read in the paper. I, I'm not I'm I'm not up to date with those views, Joe. But again, you feel free to bring oh, that up. A, there was an article in the paper this week uh, that uh, there's a the new champion uh, has beat the previous champion's record by like a factor of three or four in terms of winnings, and he's done it in a much shorter time period. Really? Uh, Turns out he's a professional gambler, so he... Okay, 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 so... Skills. Going back here to our gambling. So I have the answers from Scott, from Mike. Joe, where's your oh, answer, Joe? Uh, I I was too busy babbling. Oh, busy um, looking it up. <laughs> and yes, the, and yes, and the, look and it up, thing Mike. Hasn't, and the thing hasn't loaded on my computer. Um, okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Leave it. So, so, I, so I'm I'm torn. I torn. If you can see, if you can see my shirt, uh, this was Dev Connections 2007, let, and let I maximize. met one of the five vendors you listed at Dev Connections in Las Vegas in 2007. Okay, so so let me tell you one thing: all of those vendors, they have been in the DNN space for over all of them for over 12 years so at, at at the very least 12 years if not more okay so 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 again come on joe give me one uh, i'm going with kelly ford dnn dev kelly ford okay so so scott you did not get it mike you got it joe you got it Scott, which one was yours? Let me see here. I think I put catalog. Catalog. Actually, here's a here's a funny That's thing. Old. Here's a yeah. funny thing. Catalog is really the oldest one. Catalog was beginning of 2004. Yeah. Kelly, uh, with DN and Dev in XMOD, it was more towards the end of 2004. But the thing is that catalog is not. It's I, I, the last time that they published something was 2017. So to be quite oh, honest, so I've, I've crossed that out as oh. active, you know. I got caught in a technicality. All right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and <laughs> so, I get it. so, so these people, none of these people were in the DNN store back in those days, right? They were actually all of them were in the DNN. There was, there was no DNN store but back it's then. No, it's not okay. 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 Yeah, I right, get right. it. Snow covered, yeah. You, you, you know what, Joe? You are too you are too lawyerly. Lawyer. Ah. Too much of a lawyer, you know. 
You're, you're, now, you caught me on now, my does, own. Does, now, does anybody know why that site was called Snow Covered? The you guy know, who ran it, his I, last you know, name was the no. Bryce, the Bryce, as was Bryce Snow, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Yes, Bryce Snow. And you know what? Snow Covered, if I'm not mistaken, is up for sale. The, no, the the domain name? the domain the domain is no cover dot com uh -huh. is up for sale if you want to come up with a few a few thousand dollars you you can get it you know? <laughs> and we can we can uh, we can put and just it, redirect to DNN software store <laughs> <laughs> anyway good game uh, again redirect to the catalog <laughs> you know what catalog let me tell you when I got started with DNN around 2006, 2007, I used to have nightmares about Catalog. Nightmares. The, the first two DNN sites that I worked on had Catalog installations. And that's when I decided I really didn't want to work on any DNN sites that did e-commerce. <laughs> oh my, oh my. But, but again, it, there were good times. Actually, there was a point that I was actually becoming good in the messiness of catalog. I was actually becoming good at that thing. Anyway, sorry about that. I mean, I don't want to dist anyone from catalog, but come on, you have to keep up with times, no? And if I'm not mistaken, they are, she is from Germany, you know? Anyway, enough, enough about this. So again, the well, ones that got it. There was... <clears throat> There were some really nice words said in one of the Facebook groups this week about the person who made catalog, catalog uh, useful to people. Uh, and that that's Nina Myers. Uh, she ran a, a, catalog, a catalog help site. And, very, very and needed. I was, I was somewhat dismayed to notice this week that an old site of mine is still running uh, with a Nina Myers skin. Uh, she had a, a bunch of commercial as well as open source skins, but uh, it was one of those great old skins. Just uh, every other line is a is a a, a TD, a TR, or a, or an entire table. Oh uh, my goodness! Don't don't, don't start on that. I mean, don't start on that. But, but they still work. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you have a phone? <laughs> anyway, again, again, good times. Good that they are gone. And the winners are, once again, uh, Mike and Joe. Uh, Scott, again, you, you got it. I mean, in a way, you know, you, you got it. You know, but, uh, but again, I was thinking about active. So, good, good. So, uh, let's wrap things up here, guys. New and exciting. What's up? What's up? Uh, Scott, new and exciting. Come on, come on. Um, going to DNN, going to the DNN Connect is exciting. Yeah, that's exciting, but you know, uh, that's for next month, so I'll save that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Anything else? No, that's it. That's it, Mike. Um. I think I'm coming to Toronto in a couple of weeks, so I'll have to touch base with you. I don't know the dates yet, but I'm probably, I'm probably gonna come up for a week. Awesome. And uh, my wife has a bunch of family, or we have a bunch of family there, uh, her father and uh, aunts and things like that. So we're gonna bring the uh, the baby up and uh, and show her off to some of the uh, the cousins and things. So. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. It'll be, it'll be good to, to meet. And again, we can meet closer to your place there, okay? For sure, yeah, we'll work something out. Awesome, awesome. Joe, what's up? What's new? Well, well, my my exciting thing for the, the past year is in the line of showing off the baby. Uh, my baby, uh, I think, is older than at least two of you, um, but uh, she works for Atlassian, uh, the company that makes Jira and I Confluence, know. and she actually does... Uh, premium support for the Jira product. And they had the Atlassian Summit about three weeks ago in Las Vegas. And uh, her session was broadcast live on the 
uh, internet. So I got to, I think for the first time ever, see her work in a professional uh, environment. She did a talk on uh, upgrading JIRA and the process for upgrading JIRA. I think if you took her talk and just edited it, and every time she said JIRA, you replace it by DNN. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, it fit. Uh, uh, yeah, basically, you just don't go and upgrade. You have to do some things ahead of time. You have to think about it. You have to test it. You have to get stakeholder approval, and then you do the upgrade. And if things go wrong, you have a way to go backwards. So it was, uh, you yeah, know, it was, it was fun for me as a dad to watch my baby do this thing. Uh, but in terms of uh, things that we all do, uh, it was a, just a nice exposition of uh, what to do and, and how to go wrong. And she did tell the story of getting a marriage proposal at the end of uh, a, a long upgrade process. Yeah, it was a joke. But, uh... <laughs> Joe, Joe, apparently I'm not the only one we have an upgrade fetish, no? <laughs> um, it, you fetish or not, it's one of those things that has to be done. <laughs> okay, okay, good, good, Joe. Very good, very good. So, uh, for me, actually, while we were recording, no, I I thought about something that I I, I think that it's worth sharing. I came across this app, this mobile app a few weeks ago and there are sites out there that you can you can post an image and you can highlight the text and it can try to guess which font that image is using you know however they were all those sites they are not very accurate you know but i got an app and i don't know the top of my head but i'm going to share the link to that app that you can photograph any text and it does a real real good job guessing which font is that one and by the way why do i need that well sometimes we need to <laughs> sometimes we need to reverse engineer a logo <laughs> and then that's one way of going about guessing which font is that but again very 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 accurate app all Every time that I've tried to use it, it gave me the precise fonts that it was being used and it has been a lifesaver. So, uh, Scott, from a designer standpoint, I know that your design um, arm is very strong. You may, you may want to make use of that tool, you know? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that's one. Um, the other one, I think that I'm going to stick with that. I don't know the, the name of the app on top of my head, but I'm going to share in the notes. Had a, I'm done with my semester of coding classes. Let me just mention one thing. If you are studying coding and you want to cheat, you want to copy somebody else's code, make sure that you change at least the comments. Just a comment. <laughs> I mean, don't copy. No, no. But let, let me mention this. The individual, he copied the comments with the misspellings. The misspellings were the same. I said, come on, guys, not even my twin brother or my, my, you know, joint twin brother would do something that similar, you know? Anyway. Back in, back in my, my days of uh, uh, doing a little teaching uh, when I was a grad student, uh, somebody turned in a term paper uh, at the end of the semester, and there were about two page, uh, yeah, two or three paragraphs on one page that just did not make sense to me. Uh, but I, uh, he had footnoted things appropriately. And so I went and found the three paragraphs that he had copied uh, directly from the article. And the things that were giving me the trouble were, were words he had misspelled. Uh, you know, uh, it was, um, I think the thing I remember was he was talking about a, a raster pattern, you know, in a, in a, how TV images are created. 
and he went on and on about um, the faster patterns were better than the slower ones. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it, 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 was, it was a good one, and we had a good conversation. I'm not going to go in the excuses, but enough to say that all of them, both of them got... But they passed, they passed the course, that's fine. The good, good people, but again, just bad cop, bad, bad cheaters, just bad cheaters. Guys, well, congratulations to you for surviving your first semester. Thank you very much. It was, it was, it was an interesting one. Four sections in ninety-one people. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was good. I, I can see the, a pile of tests right in front of me. That it's already no, not what I really like about teaching is the fact that I'm done. It's, it's not, it's not a project that I have to support afterwards. That I have to maintain. Yeah. <laughs> Someone has to read my code. No, I'm gone and done. And... Uh, no, no, they'll be back soon for letters of recommendation. Well, that's in. Well, I'm not gonna recommend those cheaters. No, they know. That. <laughs> they know that, guys. Again, thank you very much for joining us. I think that our rant and our ramble, our rambling, is done. Thank you, thank you. Anything else, uh, Mike? Scott? Nothing here. I just, you know, again, thank you, Adderson. I've talk, I'll, I'll talk for all of us is that this monthly chat is only here because of you. It started because of you, but it also continues because of you. Every month you put out an agenda, you you build the videos. So so thank you for doing that. And don't tell anyone. And, and, and Scott, it's true that five years ago you had an entire set of head of hair, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. <laughs> Black and used to be black, okay, uh, Scott. Mm, that's yeah, that's all. Right. And again, don't tell anyone that I put the agenda the day, the night before. Okay, don't tell anyone that. Okay, <laughs> guys, thank you very much. I'll see you in a month. Cheers.